Hello, my name is Ben Whirling. I'm an educator with Michigan State University Extension, where I serve commercial vegetable producers. Some of the growers that I serve have begun incorporating mustard cover crops into their vegetable rotations. The purpose of this video is to show you how to grow, mow, and incorporate mustard cover crops to maximize their biofumigation potential. Mustard plants are members of the brassica family, which includes more familiar plants like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, radishes, and turnips. All members of this plant family contain chemicals called glucosinolates. Mustards, like this Indian mustard, can contain especially high levels of these glucosinolates. Now on the, their own, these glucosinolates aren't that toxic to pets. However, when plant tissue is damaged, a chemical reaction takes place that chews up these glucosinolates into smaller chemicals. One class of compounds that are produced are the isothiocyanates, which can form a toxic gas with pesticidal activity against some fungi, nematodes, insects, and weeds. The goal of biofumigation is to grow a cover crop, like mustard, create these isothiocyanates, and then work them into the soil to help control soil-borne pests. Before we continue, I want to emphasize that at this time, we can't recommend biofumigation as an alternative for chemical fumigation. We suggest you only grow mustard cover crops if they'll provide you with other benefits and view any biofumigation as a bonus. Let's go take a look at some things that we can do to increase the odds that you will see some biofumigation benefit. The first key thing to know is that a better mustard stand with more biomass means there's more potential biofumigant for you to work into the ground. This means you need to manage your mustard cover crop like you would a cash crop. First, plant your mustard at a time of year when conditions are good for mustard growth. Research has shown that late summer plantings tend to produce more consistent biomass than spring plantings. The best planting dates for the lower peninsula of Michigan tend to fall in the first three weeks of August, with earlier dates in that range being better for northern counties and later dates being better for more southern counties. This stand of mustard here was planted on August 5th in Oceana County. Second, consider applying fertilizer that contains nitrogen and sulfur in roughly a four to one to eight to one ratio. Before planting this mustard, we applied approximately 60 pounds of nitrogen and 12 pounds of sulfur per acre. Sulfur can be important in forming glucosinolates in the plant, which are the fuel for biofumigation. Last, grower experience suggests that having good soil moisture at the time of planting can help you get a good, even stand. For this reason, we applied about a half inch of irrigation water immediately after we sowed this mustard stand. Once you have a good stand of mustard, the next step is to create the biofumigant in a timely fashion. A good time to do this is when the field is in flower, because this is when plant biomass peaks. In order to create the biofumigant, you need to use a tool that will really smash up that mustard plant tissue on a cellular level. One good tool for accomplishing this is a flail mower because it very finely chops up vegetation. Once you create the biofumigant, the next step is to work it into the soil as soon as possible. Remember that these biofumigants are gases, so that the longer you wait to work that mustard into the soil, the more gas will escape and not get into the soil where it can help control pests. One way to do this is to immediately follow behind your flail mower with a tillage implement like a rototiller or a disc to work those mustard plants into the top six inches of soil. Some growers will attempt to seal the soil surface after they've incorporated the mustard to keep biofumigant gases from escaping. One way to do this is to run a cultipacker over the soil. This can create a thin compacted layer of soil at the surface to help keep biofumigant gases from escaping. Weather conditions at the time that you incorporate your mustard can affect how much biofumigant gases are released into the soil. Soil temperature may be especially important, with more biofumigant gas being produced, the warmer the soil is. There's also some limited evidence that soil moisture might be important, with increased soil moisture leading to more production of biofumigant gases. Once you're done with biofumigation, 
you'll be left with a field of bare soil. This could leave your land susceptible to erosion. Consider planting a fall cover crop like cereal rye after you're done incorporating your mustard. Waiting one to two weeks after you're done with biofumigation could be helpful because it could allow those biofumigant gases to dissipate. This could be important because these gases can hinder germination of following crops. If you would like more information on growing mustard cover crops or cover crops in general, please visit the Midwest Cover Crop Council website or talk with your local extension educator. Thank you for joining me today.